guys! Today I'm going to rank all the Hammer Frankenstein films. That includes the Six Peter Cushion films and the Ralph Bates film. So I'll put them in reverse order from 7 to 1. One being the best. So this is just my opinion. Yours will be completely different to mine I bet. Right so let's start. In 7th place I've got The Horror of Frankenstein from 1970. This is the only one that doesn't have Peter Cushing playing the Baron. Instead it has Ralph Bates. He's good but he's not a patch off Peter Cushing. And this film's sort of separate from the series. It's more of a spoof of the Curse of Frankenstein film. However the monster looks poor. It was directed by Jimmy Sangster and it's bottom of the list but even though it's still a good film with it being more of a comedy it's not as good as the other films. Is your invitation still open? Of course it is. We'll have a marvellous time. The whole of the summer with nothing to do but mess around in my laboratory. I've ordered tons of new equipment to be sent to the castle. I've always wanted to spend summer in a laboratory. No, seriously. You know those experiments I've been working on? Yes. Well, I've got some really incredible ideas. In sixth place, I've got The Revenge of Frankenstein from 1958. This was directed by Terence Fisher and it's the second film in the series. It was made just a year after The Curse of Frankenstein. However, it's a big disappointment compared to the first film. Although Peter Cushion's great as the Baron, the film seems to lack energy. And the monster's power, it's just a man with stitches on his forehead. And even though the Baron's experimenting on animals that turn cannibalistic, this doesn't happen with his creation of the monster. So it could have been a better film if the film had focused more on the cannibalism plot. In fifth place, I've got The Evil of Frankenstein from 1964. This film was directed by Freddie Francis and it's an unusual film in the series because it's sort of like a reboot. The Baron finds his monster in a block of ice, so it's a bit like the Universal films. In fact Hammer had the rights to the Universal makeup, so the monster looks similar. It's just a pity they didn't go full on with the makeup and made them look more like Karloff, so it only looks similar. And Peter Cushion's Baron's not as evil in this film, he's more likeable. A bit like how he is in Frankenstein Created Woman. The film's still good fun, but it's not one of the best in the series. Although it does look a bit more expensive than usual. The tempestuous forces of nature to give it life. Good night. In fourth place, I've got Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. From 1974. This was directed by Terence Fisher. I've just recently reviewed it on the channel. I think it's an underrated gem from the 1970s. Peter Cushing gives an edgy performance. In this one he's tired and he, he seems to be as though he's cracking up. That all his defeats are making him go crazy. And the film's set in a mental asylum. It has a good monster and the film's quite gory. So this was the final film in the series and it was a great end to the series. Having the Baron crack up after all of his defeats. However the film does look a, a bit cheap using the same sets. But next time. Next time? Of course. We'll discuss the details later. For the moment we must get this place tidied up so that we can start afresh. Now we should need new material naturally. Herr Adler in 106 perhaps. In third place I've got Frankenstein Created Woman from 1967. This was directed by Terence Fisher again and it's actually one of Martin Scorsese's favourite films. In this film the Baron's transferring the conscience of someone into another body so it's soul transference. Instead of transferring brains he's transferring the soul. So it's metaphysical instead of physical. So in this film there's not really a monster, instead it's a beautiful woman. And the film's got lots of great characters and it has a revenge subplot where the Baron's creations taking revenge on these men that have been calling their names. Peter Cushion's not evil in this one, he's almost friendly. So it's a great film. Frankenstein's most terrifying experiment comes to life. Frankenstein created woman. Who am I? 
In second place, I've got The Curse of Frankenstein from 1957. This was directed by Terence Fisher and it's a landmark horror film. This sort of started the Hammer Horror Gothic horror cycle of films. It was the first one to star Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. And Peter Cushing's a right evil sod in this one. And Christopher Lee's makeup looks really scary in this one. It's very underrated makeup. In first place, and my favourite in the series, and it's Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed from 1969. And this is mostly because of Peter Cushing's performance. He, he's brilliant in this one. He blackmails, he rapes, he does all sorts of evil stuff. And it has a great cast. Simon Ward, Veronica Carlson, Freddie Jones. Freddie Jones is excellent as the creature. And it has a good fiery climax. So it's an extremely well made Hammer film. How dare you? What right? I have every right. You are both engaged in highly illegal business. Illegal business? What do you mean? Well, come now, Miss Spengler. You know what I'm talking about. The Narcotics Bureau would prove it in no time at all. It's uncanny how they eventually discover irregularities in their record books. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below what order yours are in, because I, I bet they're completely different to my order. And look out for another video like this where I'll be ranking the nine Dracula Hammer films in order. That yes! includes the seven Christopher Lee Dracula films as well as The Brides of Dracula and The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Okay everybody, bye! Like, subscribe and share. Bye, bye. Excuse me, I didn't know that you were doctors. Doctors? We are not doctors. I beg your pardon, I thought you knew what you were talking about. You're damn rude.